Hey everyone, so it's Hearth and welcome back to my channel. So on today's video we are going to be doing another deck walkthrough video and this is for the Saints and Mystics reading cards. So I actually got this deck in quite an unusual way. Um, I actually got these to sell them on my stall because I do have a witchcraft store and I sell at events. I sell tarot oracle and reading cards and this was one of the decks that I got in to sell on the stall and I looked at it and went oh, I need it. So I ended up getting myself an extra deck just so that I could keep them for myself because I love them so so much. Now I'm not entirely certain on the retail price of this deck because obviously I did get it um, from a supplier so that I could sell it on but I will have a look around and I'll put the information down in the description box for anyone that's interested. So this particular deck really really caught my attention mainly because the imagery is so so beautiful. It is this kind of um, surreal imagery that is not really what I was expecting. It's beautiful and it's so like counterintuitive. I don't know how to put it. It's a deck that looks like it's viewing the world from an outside point. Kind of like if you stare into a mirror for too long and you start seeing your face kind of shift and change. It kind of feels like that and I don't know how else to word it. It's like you you look at the imagery and it looks like it's it's our world but shifted. And that's what I liked so much about it. I liked the fact that it was quite surreal. It, it was quite strange and odd and it's really, really captivating. And that's what I look for in a deck of cards. Whether that's a tarot deck, an oracle deck, just reading cards, doesn't matter to me. It just has to be captivating. The imagery has to really draw you in. Because if the imagery doesn't draw you in, you can't, as far as I have found, get really detailed um, interpretations of the cards. Because if the card is just a single little image, that's all you can draw from it. But when a card is really detailed and odd and weird and it has these little details that you can pick out from, that's when reading cards become so, so much more useful. So I really, really felt that when it came to this particular deck. So the deck itself is cardboard. It's hard cardboard, which I like because it helps keep the deck secure. This is the kind of packaging I really, really like when it comes to decks because the paper packaging, it gets damaged way too easily. And also it starts to fade really, really quickly. I have a vintage deck up on the shelf at the very top and that is battered. It's in a really thin paper card box. It's torn to smithers. It's all faded and it's just not looking its best. Whereas I find that boxes like this, they keep their colour for longer and they also keep the deck way, way safer. So this is how the outside of the deck looks. It has this beautiful image on the front and then the Saints and Mystics is in a um, metallic gold. If any of you saw my last um, deck walkthrough video which was on the Yogic Path um, Oracle deck, it's not as gold as that. Like it's definitely not as high quality as that deck was. But it's still, it's still pretty nice. Down the side it says Saints and Mystic reading cards and immediately you can see there's a difference in, in the way it's been done. So this on the front is like gold, this is just made to look like the colour gold but it's not actually shimmery. I don't know if that makes any sense but like this isn't reflective whereas this is reflective, like you can clearly see that this is reflective. And there it does say, Saints and Mystics Reading Cards by Andres and Gracia. And then on the back, you have some more information. Now, once again, this writing here isn't actually gold. It's made to look like gold, but can you see it never, it never moves, like it never changes. It's being given a fake kind of shine that's just printed in. Now, that really doesn't bother me. This is me nitpicking because I nitpick with every single deck that I get. I am so pernickety when it comes to the details of a deck and that's just something I want to let you know because obviously looking at it online, you might think that this is gold and it's not. It's just printed. So, 
I am quite nitpicky when it comes to decks. It's not me like being really mean to the deck and the manufacturer. It's basically just so that you guys know any potential thing that might annoy you. It's not going to annoy everyone. It probably will only annoy about 1% of you guys that are watching, but I do want to let that 1% know if they think they might be annoyed, triggered, anything else by it. Because I know that there are some things that will just frustrate people so, so much. I've seen it on one of my last decks, the last walkthrough that I did, the box lid was about two millimeters too big, so it rattled and it just kind of fell off. And I know that that would really annoy some people. So it's just this kind of nitpicking to make sure that you don't feel uncomfortable with the deck that you've bought. Anyway, moving on. So the back does have more information on it and it does show the imagery of four cards from inside the deck, which I really like. I like the fact that it kind of gives you a, a taster of what the inside of the deck is going to be. Not all decks have this, and I think that all decks should have this, because if you're in a shop or if you're at an event, you're going to want to see what the cards look like, and not everyone is going to have a pre-opened set of cards ready for you to look at. So the back does have some information that I'm going to read out to you guys. So this is the Saints and Mystic Reading Cards by Andre and Gracia and it's illustrated by Wesley Souza. Now I'm really sorry if I butchered those names, um, names, pronunciation, not my forte. This beautifully illustrated 36 card deck brings to life the stories and mystical knowledge of some of history's most fascinating spiritual and mystical figures. From Nostradamus and Marie Laveau to St. Jude, Isaac Newton and St. Sebastian, each card unlocks key facts about these inspiring men and women, along with psychic tips to connect to their great wisdom and eternal spirits. And then at the very bottom it says, Andre Ingracia is a psychic medium who has developed unique mystical practices that have been influenced by his Spanish, Mexican ancestry of psychics and brujas. And this is by Rockpool Publishing. So I love that. I love it when decks draw on um, other things, other traditions than other decks. So most decks that I um, either have seen, that I have worked with, they have been decks of um, very European Western tradition. So there's in there, there's lots of kind of angels, there's lots of ideals from Europe and that kind of thing. I like the fact that this deck draws on this Spanish-Mexican background. I really enjoy that. And I like the fact that it goes into more unusual um, individuals than what you might immediately think. So when you want to open this deck, it does open on the side and it is magnetic, which I really, really appreciate. I like the fact that I don't have to faff around with any closures. I like the fact that I don't have to worry about it getting bent because it hasn't closed properly. So the fact that it's magnetic is great. And then it opens like this and they've added the extra touch of actually putting a different card here and they've actually re-put the information here, which I really, really like. I like the fact that this isn't just blank. And then opening it up, you do have a really nice interior. It is super shiny, so sorry if uh, the sunlight is kind of like destroying what it looks like. But it is a beautifully patterned interior, so I really, really appreciate that. And the interior goes all the way up to the edges, which is great, because on some of the cheaper decks, you just don't get that. So inside, it looks like this. And this is a full size book. Now that I really, really like because in a lot of these decks, the book that you receive is maybe like this big, which is infuriating because if you have any reading difficulties, if you struggle to read small writing, if you have any mobility issues and you struggle to use your hands and your fingers to their fullest extent, a tiny book this big is essentially useless. I know some people who have arthritis in their fingers and the simple fact is that they cannot turn the little tiny pages in order to look through the book. And also a lot of decks will have paper booklets which 
are just a nightmare. I don't understand why decks have paper booklets. They are useless, which rip really easily. They don't age well. They're super easy to tear and destroy. So I like the fact this comes with a full size book. Now it's quite thin, but it is kind of a full decent-ish sized book, which I really, really like. So the back of this book is the same print as the inside of the deck box, which I like. It's that kind of everything matchy matchy. And then the front is the same cover as the front of the deck box. See? They're the same. Yeah. Lots of matchy matchy, which I do really, really like. So if I have a quick look through the book, it is in colour, which I really, really like. I like the fact that um, books are in colour because I find it really helps to get the message of the cards across. A lot of books that I own are in black and white and the cards are vividly coloured. And I do find that books like that, they're kind of missing something. There's something not quite right with them. So from experience, I know that printing books in black and white is cheaper than printing them in colour, which I understand. But also it does seem kind of like a cop-out to have beautifully coloured cards and then a black and white book. So I like it when books are coloured. So as we flick through, you have a content section which is nice so it goes into a little bit of an introduction a little bit into how to use the cards which is great for people who haven't already used reading cards before this is a really great thing and then it goes through all of the saints followed by all of the mystics which i really really like and then it goes into about the author about the illustrator so it's nice getting that little bit of more information about the people that created it because I think when you know a little bit about the people that create it it gives you a different outlook on the deck itself so after that little section you do have this kind of intermediary page that kind of allows you to divide onto the next pages of the book and then it goes on to a little bit of an introduction and then it goes, oh wow, okay, so it doesn't just go into like what the cards are, instead it actually goes into um, a real detailed look as to the different ways that you can use them. So they are men and women who've walked the earth and helped to shape our awareness of the spiritual world. And it looks onto the idea of them being both reading cards but they can also be used as um, altar pieces, prayer tools, they can be used in much more than just reading cards and I really really like the fact that the book mentions it because obviously a lot of us who have used reading cards for years and years and years we kind of know the tips and tricks of how to get the most out of a deck of cards. Like, you can use them for more than just reading with. I'm going to have to do a full video on that because that's an interesting topic all of its own. But I like the fact that the book does go into that. I really, really appreciate it. And it does go to show that the creator of the book is not just in it just to make a quick book. Like, they're in it because they have a passion for what they've gone into and they're willing to teach you that and I really appreciate that because there are some decks that I've got where it's like bing bang boom deck is finished here you go I don't care anymore whereas this is like this is really nice so it then goes on to a section of how to use the cards where it goes into how to make a connection with the deck how to cleanse and charge them then into how to read so it does kind of single readings saint reading spreads, mystic reading spreads, so it allows you to like split the deck according to what you need to learn about. Then it goes into kind of cross spreads that blend the cards together and it gives you the illustrations for it as well which I really really appreciate because some people don't learn through words, some people learn through imagery and if that imagery isn't there I think you lose some of the audience that maybe isn't going to fully grasp what you're trying to describe with words alone. So I like the fact that they've included imagery as well. And then it goes into kind of further suggestions and then straight into the cards. So let's see, do the cards have pictures? They do, okay, so each card has a double spread, which I really, really like. They've not limited um, kind of how much information they give. I know that in some decks, 
they will force themselves to squish it all onto one page or they'll force themselves to completely fill two pages. Whereas on this, they've left themselves room like here is blank. And I appreciate that. Like you don't have to fill all of the pages. If this is everything that needs to be said, fantastic. If you were to squish that onto one page, it wouldn't be enough. If you were to spread it onto two, it would be like waffle. So I like the fact that the author has acknowledged the fact that this is the amount of information needed. And that's what they've gone with. And I really, really like that. Now, the only thing that I will say is that the imagery to the cards is very small. It's up here in this little square. And I mean, for me, not needing glasses, that's fine. But if I maybe was not so good at recognizing which card was which, I think it would have been good to make the card image slightly bigger. But then you would be sacrificing the rest of the page. So it's there and I appreciate that it's there. And then going down, it gives the basic idea of the card is actually the very first thing. It's the very top line is the basic idea of the card. Then it goes into who the card represents, why it represents them, their special day for that saint or mystic. Then it goes on to a bit of the history of the saint, the oracle meaning both emotionally, spiritually and consciously. So it gives you a lot of information. Then it goes into how to leave offerings for that particular saint, which I really, really like. And this definitely draws a whole lot on the Spanish, Mexican, Bruja technique of working with saints and mystics. And I really, really appreciate that. It gives you the um, recommended um, offerings to them and how to petition them to assist you in your life. Like I really, really like that. And then at the very bottom, it gives you an invocation to actually speak when you're working with that particular saint. And I'm, yeah, it does that on every single saint, which I really, really appreciate. That's, that's fantastic. It's the amount of detail that the author has put in really, really stands out. And it it is very clear that this person is very, very knowledgeable in their field and they are willing to show you that. And I thoroughly, thoroughly appreciate that. So moving on to the mystics. So they have done another divider page here before moving on to the mystics, which I think is great. It allows you to easily tell which is which, which is good because for some people it might be less easy to differentiate between saints and mystics if you haven't really studied the background of the two. And it does also give you a little bit of a um, terminology, the fact that um, mystic is a noun and it's a person who seeks by contemplation and self-surrender to obtain unity with or absorption into the deity or the absolute, or who believes in the spiritual apprehension of truths that are beyond the intellect. So I like the fact that it gives you this kind of description, this very technical description for what the mystics actually are. And then going into the mystics, the same again, you have a little image at the top, you have what they represent, you have their name, why they are a mystic, which I really, really like. You have some history about them, you then have the oracle meanings emotionally, spiritually, and consciously. And then, I'm not sure if it's on all of them. It is, I think it is. You have a little bit of a quote from every single mystic. So this one is for Aristotle, and it reads, I count him braver who overcomes his desires than him who conquers his enemies, for the hardest victory is over self. And I like the fact that it gives you this kind of glimpse into them and their views from them as a quote. So I really, really like that. And then flicking through, getting towards the end now, you have a little bit about the, about the author here with a full color photograph, which I really like. And I'm definitely gonna read it more on him because he sounds just fascinating as a person. I read a little bit and he just sounds absolutely amazing. You have a little bit about the illustrator and then some acknowledgements and that's the book finished. So I like, I like the size of the book. I like the way it has been laid out. I think it's quite simple and easy to follow. And I do really appreciate the fact that blank space has been left when blank space was needed. You know, sometimes filling up two pages, it will be filled with waffles. So instead 
they've left blank. And for me, I would much rather get the concise information that I need than a whole lot of waffle that I didn't ask for. So I really, really appreciate that. So now, moving on to the cards. Now the cards themselves are stored in kind of an odd way. When I first got this deck, I was expecting it to be like the Yogic Path Oracle deck, where the cards were in their own section. They, they had their own box. The cards don't have their own box, and they're actually bigger than the indent that there's, there is for them, so this top card just kind of slides around. But if I get them out, let's hope. The one thing that I have found that I dislike about this box is this. So they finished this off really nice, like all the way up to the edge, but then when you take the cards out, this, this is just the cardboard. Like they haven't extended the gold all the way across, and I'm not sure why they did that. Like did they just expect you to not take the cards out? Like I would understand if there was like a glued in panel here, you know, like so that you had the cardboard underneath and there was, there was a glued in panel, but the fact that they just kind of left it plain when you are going to take the cards out because that's the purpose of the cards kind of confuses me but oh well it's just a box so if that doesn't bother you fine um i just want to mention it just in case it does okay now the cards are a really really nice size they're kind of face sized which i really really appreciate i like this style of deck because it's a lot easier to handle so if you do have mobility issues if you do have sight issues and you find the small cards to be too small this size of deck is great the edges are also beveled so they're like um, curved no sharp corners really nice they're really nice quality they're not the thickest cards i've ever used but they are um, nice enough you know that they're, they're good for what they are so the edges of the cards are just white, there's no gilding or anything, which I don't mind. It never said that there was going to be gilding, and honestly, sometimes I think golden, gold edges and gilding is a little bit much. I mean, it's a nice touch, but I never expected it. So honestly, they're really, really nice cards. The one thing I do want to say is that they have actually split these cards, so I'm hoping you guys can see the difference. Um, these are the mystics, these are the saints. So they have different background. So for some readers, this might be distracting. And I say that because some readers who read professionally for others, they might want the person in question to draw a card that they feel particularly connected to. So you will lay out a spread of cards and you will ask the person you're reading for to pick out a card that you feel connected to and then you will read that card for them and that's kind of an additional aspect to the reading. But with the backs of these cards being the way they are, I think that that might not work. Mainly because certain people might favour one colourway than the other. They might be concerned about these cards because they're quite dark and they might, if they are very drawn to angels and saints, they might immediately feel like they need to draw from this deck because it's somehow pure and this deck isn't. So that's a downside. I kind of wish that they had just had the same background. Like I understand why they've done it, it's to differentiate between the two, but personally, as someone who has done readings for others, I think that this might be a bit distracting. But it's pretty and the imagery is nice. So that is the back of the Saints deck half. And this is the back of the Mystic Saints half. So they're very beautiful, very different. I know which one I prefer. I prefer this side, but I know that some people will definitely prefer this side. Now that we've looked at the back, Let's look at the front of the cards. I am mainly just going to go through this with music so that you guys can really look at the imagery of a card. So I'm not going to talk all the way through, I'm just going to show you. So I am going to get that set up and then we can flick through the cards.
So you guys, which card did you feel most drawn to? Which is your favorite imagery? Which one is your favorite card? I would absolutely love to know down in the comment section what you felt most drawn to. Now I know which one I feel most drawn to and it was the moment I looked through this deck, I was drawn to this card. It is a saint card and it is Santa Muerte. She is my favorite card in this entire deck. I don't know what it is, whether it's the color or the imagery or just, oh, I this is my favorite card, but I would absolutely love to know what you guys' favorite, favorite card is. Whether that is based on your connection, whether that's based on the imagery. Let me know down in the comment section your favorite card and just a little bit as to why you're so drawn to it, because I'd love to see how other people react to this deck. So that is a look at the Saints and Mystics Oracle deck. I really, really like this deck. I think it has beautiful imagery. I do think it has downsides. I think that it is great for um, single draw readings. So if you wanna draw a card a day to help bring the energy of that person into your life, if you wanna add it onto altars, I think it's great. If you wanna add them into rituals and use them as tools to help connect with them, I think they're really, really great. And it adds this idea of Spanish-Mexican um, ritual aspect into the deck. And I thoroughly appreciate that. It's great seeing a deck that comes from a different background than most traditional oracle reading cards and I really 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 like that. I think the imagery is beautiful, it's vivid, it's vibrant, I mean it's stunning. I do wish that the cards were matte, not super shiny, because if you are reading for others, especially if you're reading out and about, so if you're at an event for instance, this glare is going to limit how well you can see the cards and especially events where down lighting is used I think it could get a little could get a little annoying. I have light sensitivity and if bright light just shines straight in my eyes it can really affect how well I respond to everything else. So I wish they were like the soft touch matte cards, those are my favourite, but they are really, really nice cards, they're vivid, they're beautiful, they go into great detail of every single card, and this book is really, really good. I like how it's been laid out, I like how everything's been written, it's easy to understand but it's detailed, and I really love the fact that the Saints have got their own little section on how to um, work with them the kind of offerings to leave, the invocations. I really, really, really like that. So honestly, overall, I think this deck is really, really nice. It definitely isn't gonna be for everyone and it's definitely not as versatile as some other decks might be. So I do have some Oracle decks that are better for reading. So that is really the only downside I have for this deck, like big-ish downside, is that because each individual saint or mystic is so powerful, so energetic, so significant in their own right. Reading from them with more than one card drawn might be a little bit tricky. It would be similar, this is how I kind of work it in my head, it would be similar as using just a royal tarot deck. So a royal tarot deck is where you just have the major arcana cards and you just have like the empress, the fool, you know, you have all these big, big cards, these big representational cards. And it's really hard to do a tarot reading with just the royal deck because you're missing the context. You have these big faces, you have these big powerful energies and you don't have anything else around them. I think this could be similar in the each saint and mystic is so strong in their own right that I think reading from them, you might lose the little things. You might get all the big archetypes that are important in that situation, but you might lose the little detailed aspects that you might find in another deck. But other than that, if that's not what you're after, then this is a really, really beautiful deck and I really like using them. I do daily draws with them and I think they're fantastic to connect with and work with on altars. And if you are really interested in working with the saints and the mystics, if you really wanna, especially the saints, if you wanna work with them, you wanna connect with them, you wanna leave offerings for them, you wanna set up altars for them, this is a really great option because it gives you so many options when it comes to working with them. And I really, really, really like that. 
So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys enjoyed looking through the deck. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, but some people really like seeing other people's decks and like looking through all the cards. And it also might give you an idea as to whether or not you like the idea of this deck, having seen someone's viewpoint that has already used them. So if you did enjoy this video, feel free to give it a like. That really, really means so much to me. If you do have any questions, comments, concerns, video ideas, or just want to chit chat with the community down in the comment section, feel free to post a comment. I have posted where you can get this deck from down in the description box. One of the links is a link to my site if you did want to get them from me. Of course, you don't ever have to get anything from me if you don't want to. I have also posted a link to Amazon as well, which is fantastic if you are of other parts of the world that small businesses can't ship to. I will say that the Amazon link is an affiliate link, so anything that is purchased through that link, I will get a little bit of a percentage to help the channel. Of course, you don't have to use that link at all. You can search it up for yourself. That is completely fine. And one last thing that I will say is that if you're interested in buying tarot and oracle cards, even though Amazon and eBay might sound like an amazing choice, try looking at small businesses because the sale in a small business means a whole lot more than it means to a big corporation like Amazon. And it's the big corporations like Amazon that sell decks for so cheap that it basically undercuts everyone else and no one else can make a profit. So if you're interested in supporting small businesses, I would suggest finding a deck available on a small business website or at an event or a shop in person and help keep that business alive. Because unfortunately with how the mainstream market is going, witchcraft and divination is becoming more popular and it is pushing out the small businesses who have been there for suppliers, who've been there for spell workers and readers for decades. So if you want to, feel free to have a look for some small businesses that do sell this deck because it is really, really beautiful and they really deserve your support. So enough of me talking. I hope you guys have a marvelous magical day. I do post new videos on this channel every Wednesday and every Saturday at 6 p.m. So I hope you have a marvelous magical day and I will see you in another video. Bye.